Hey, hey, hey. Technical difficulties. Happens every day. <laughs> At least in my world. So, normally I take the tack that you should do something to grow and supersize your business. But today, I'm going to argue that you don't want to beat a dead horse in order to supersize and grow your business. Now, beating a dead horse. We pretty much all know this expression and what it means, right? <coughs> Excuse me. This expression, this idiom, actually came from Plautus, the Roman playwright in 195 BC. So it's been with us. This expression has been with us for thousands of years. What does that mean to you and your business? It means that it's inherent. This It's influenced human behavior for thousands of years. Anything that's that, you know, it's cemented in our society has impacted our thoughts, our behaviors, our feelings, and the way we respond to things. Now, beating a dead horse, what does that mean? That means that you continue to, to try to do something or influence something after the issue is dead or decided. You might uh, pursue a useless goal. You might be going after the wrong thing or the wrong customers or the wrong um, product or service that people just don't want anymore. You know, think of the the buggy, the, the horse and buggy industry and whips. And when the automobile industry came along, did we need whips anymore? Well, yeah, we need a few, but not many people use whips anymore, right? On their horses. Me growing up with horses, I hate the whole whip thing. We didn't even, I think we had one hanging in the tack room, but I don't think we ever used it. I think it actually, you know, dried out and died on the wall <laughs> of the barn in the tack room because we just never used it. My sisters and I, family girls and my dad, we were like, yeah, we're not using that. Why do we have that? Um, we didn't even use those bits that like dig into their mouth. It's like, why do you need to do that? That's just not right. If you treat your animal right and you train it right, you get the response that you want. Same with our customers, same with people, right? If we treat people the way we want to be treated, if we serve them and help them solve their problems and we give to them first, guess what? They want to do business with us and we don't have to beat them up to do business with us. We don't have to use tricks and strategies and techniques that are sleazy or salesy or manipulative because people will come to us and want to do business with us. Now, if you want to do sleazy, manipulative, salesy, creepy things, I am not the person to be listening to. Go find some high ticket sales guy that will or you know, high ticket closers or or pressure closers or sales strategy or techniques that will teach you how to do that. But that's that's never going to be what you get from me because to me, that's like beating a dead horse. It's like selling your products to the wrong person. It's like providing your services to people that don't really need them. Really? That is beating a dead horse. Don't do it. Um other ways that I've seen <clears throat> horses being beaten, dead horses being beaten in my life and in my career and in my own personal experience and guilty way of doing it is <clears throat> after, I, I used to see it all the time in staff meetings. We'd go to staff meetings in corporate America. We'd have meetings. We'd agree on stuff. We'd have a discussion about it. Everybody would agree, okay, this is the direction we're going to take. And then after the meeting, there would be a couple of people that would be out Okay, bitching, moaning, and complaining because they didn't like the way the decision was made or they didn't like the direction that we were taking. And so instead of supporting it and going along with it, and this is actually dysfunctional behavior, and if you see it in your organization, get rid of it immediately. <clears throat> but we would see it and they would continue for, for days for sure, but sometimes it was weeks and months and some people even years just replaying and continuing to say why this wasn't right and why their version of how events should be was the proper and the right way to do. And this was doomed to fail because we hadn't gone with them and their decision. And people will tell that story over and over and over again and, you know, ad nauseum till you don't even want to be around them anymore. That is an example of beating a dead horse. Um, Continuing to fight a battle after you've lost, that's an example of being a dead horse. You know, the telling your story long after you've lost the battle. Number one, it keeps you locked in place and it doesn't allow you to move on or your organization to move on. You know, think of, and I can think of some examples where I've been in organizations where we've had legal situations or auditing situations where <laughs> we would have a process or a product temporarily shut down, not my businesses, but businesses that I work for because of an, an auditing violation or something. <laughs> no, not a, not a safety issue, but like a, just a, Hey, there's a better way to do this. This is the standard. You need to do this and get up to standard. And we might think that is unjust and whine and, and complain about it and argue that it's unjust. But if we're arguing that it's unjust or not fair, 
We're not fixing it and solving the problem and moving on. So the faster we can stop beating the dead horse and talking about how it's not fair, it's not right, these changes in, because laws and things change all the time and we need to be flexible enough to change with them. But if we're stuck complaining and fighting against the change, we're not moving forward in our business. So those are examples to me of beating dead horses. I would love to hear any examples you have of situations that you found yourself in that you were actually beating a dead horse in your personal life or in your business life because <clears throat> i love putting together stories and learning from other people what situation they were facing and then what they did about it i remember getting fired from one of my jobs and i was devastated and i was beating a dead horse of how unjust and unfair it was and fighting against what had happened and it wasn't until i realized that it didn't matter I didn't want to go back there no matter what. Even if I won the battle, I would lose the war because I didn't ever want to work for that organization and with those people again. So I had to stop beating a dead horse, feeling sorry for myself, thinking that it was unjust and unfair and decide, okay, well now what am I going to do about it? Well, what did I do about it? I got another job, right? And moved on with my life. So think of examples of that in your life. Are you trying to sell useless things to the people that you're supposed to serve? That's beating a dead horse. Are you arguing for things that are already decided, changed, and don't really matter? That's beating a dead horse. Share your examples in the comments below because I would love to know. And I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.